were twin roasting chickens all ready for the oven, but one of them has undergone surgery. Can you tell which twin has had the operation? Stay tuned for Operation Chicken today on The French Chef. The French Chef is made possible by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated and by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Now these are twin roasting chickens, but they look exactly like twins, but this is the one here that has had the operation, and it's called a Poulard de demi désossé, and what has happened to it is, though it looks real, the legs and the wings are real, but it has a counterfeit breast. When you peel back the skin, you see underneath the white meat that has been cut in strips, and below that is a savory stuffing of rice and mushrooms and herbs. This is a wonderful way to do a chicken, and it's called in French, poulard de demi désossé. And poulard means a roasting chicken, and that's spelled P for pneumonia, O-U-L-A-R-D-E. And demi means demi, and désossé means deboned. And it's only demi désossé because you've only taken the breast out. And now here's another whole roasting chicken, and I'm going to show you how to do this remarkable feat. So I think you'll enjoy it. It's a great deal of fun. And it's very easy to carve and serve. But if you're going to bone a chicken, you've got to have a really sharp little knife. This is the kind of knife I like. This is a small butcher's knife, which you can get in a butcher's supply place or a hardware store usually, or in France. And then you want to be sure and get yourself a good big butcher's steel and then sharpen up the knife so it's just like a razor. It's terrible, I think, how people have dull knives in their kitchens and you really just can't do anything with a dull knife at all. Now, the first step, this is just an ordinary roaster. You have to take all the little treasures out of the inside. There's some fat and the neck and a lovely liver. Roasters have the best livers. They're sort of a pale color, and there are the giblets. And you want to save all of these because these you can use in, in a stock. And then you want to look over the chicken very carefully. Put on your glasses. And they should have taken all the feather follicles and everything else out of the chicken. You ought to see, I think the American chickens are beautifully done. But if you go over to France, it really takes you half an hour to clean a chicken because there are all kinds of little hairs and everything over it. and then you have to do all kinds of things to it. But one thing you want to be sure to do is to take the, these little elbow flaps off because they're no good and they're tough and somebody might break their teeth on them. And then you want to take the wishbone out. And the neck also, before you take the wishbone out, you want to cut the, there's the neck, they usually leave two too long, so you just have to cut that off and add that to your giblet pile. And then often there's a bit of fat that's attached to the skin up at the neck, and take that out. And keep all the fat, because you can render it, and it's very good for cooking. And then the wishbone, you can feel it with your finger, and just take a little knife and cut on either side of it. I always do this for any roasting chicken, because it makes the carving much easier. Then you see when you come to the end, you just cut it off. Then you come up to the V point up at the top. So I've cut on either side, and then you grab it, and that ought to just twist out. If it doesn't twist out, cut it. But you find that in the carving, it makes it much easier to have the wishbone out. And there it is. And then turn the chicken over and make sure that they've taken out the fat glands, which are at the base of the tail. 
And if they aren't taken out, particularly in a large chicken like a roaster, they're rather strong tasting and they're rather they're sort of orange things. And if you notice any little orange things back there, cut them out. And now, this, this much you would do on any chicken that you were going to cook whole. But we're going to now start the operation on the poulard de demi désossé. And you want to have your little sharp knife and you slit the skin on top from the, from the front, from the neck end, right down. I better put my glasses on again. Right down to the tail. And slit it as evenly as possible because you want to, you're going to fold this skin back over the breast after you've done the stuffing. And then, another, there, that tail part. And now, you just peel the skin back. It just peels very easily on either side. And you find that sometimes there's, see there's a little bit of filament there. You can pull it away with your finger, just cut it with your knife. And now we have the chicken with its breasts bared, and we're ready to take off the meat. And what you're going to do is to take the breast meat off uh, each side, one side at a time. And you, here's, your, here's what the breast bone looks like, and the breast meat just sits right on the bone. This is from another chicken. And just take your little knife and cut right down one side of the breast bone and go right down from one end to the other. It doesn't make any difference which side you start on. And then start scraping the meat against the bone. This you remember when we boned a turkey. This is exactly the same system. And that same principle remains is that you always cut against the bone and, and not against the skin. And then you don't run into any trouble and then you peel it with your fingers. Now when you get down to this, see I've practically got down to the end of the white meat. You then want to be very careful that you don't let your knife slip and slit the breast skin because you want to keep that entirely in one piece so that you can play this witch twin trick again if you have two roasters because you don't want to have any holes in the skin. Now we're coming down to the very end to where the breast meat is attached up to the shoulder, up to where the wing joins on. And there you are. And this now is a boned, as a boned, boned breast of chicken is called a suprême. That's just spelt like supreme. And you often will see that on a menu, a suprême de volaille. And that's exactly what th that is. There are no bones in it, and there's no wing bone or anything like that to it. Now, this is a very typical French thing of taking, taking a simple thing like a chicken and then just doing something like this to it. They always like to take something simple and either mold it or unmold it or squeeze it or bone it. And that's, I think, the part of the essence of French cooking, which is the kind of thing they're always inclined to do. And now, here is you have your suprême, and this is the outside that was near the skin. And then if you turn it over, and this is the part that was near the bone, you notice that it has two parts. They're like two little flaps. And they just peel apart from each other. And this small part is called the filet mignon, just like the steak filet mignon, that it's, that it's a little piece. And the large one is called the filet. And you'll notice in the filet mignon, the small piece, there's this piece of white, which is a tendon. And that you want to get out. So you just take your little knife and go underneath it and then hold it. I'm going to have to bring it over here because it's rather slippery, so hold it with a corner of your towel and just gently pull and scrape. You've got my thumb on the top of my knife. And then there is your little tendon. If you leave that in, it's a little bit tough, and it sometimes makes this little piece of meat draw up. 
So, no, the tendon you can also add to your stock pot. And now we have the other side of the chicken, which you take the meat off, and that's done in exactly the same way. Remember to scrape very close to the bone so you're not wasting any of the meat. And again, remember cutting against the bone all the time and then peeling with your fingers. It's sort of a, a cut-scrape business. Actually, if you're going to do one of those chicken breast dishes, you find that it's much easier to take the breast off a whole chicken than it is off a chicken in pieces. Now, I'm being very careful as I get down to the edge of this breast meat so I'm not going to cut the skin. And now here, here is where the tendon on that little filet mignon was attached. It's attached just about where the wishbone was. And if you don't cut it off while you're taking off the breast meat, you can remove it on the chicken, which I think is a little easier because it isn't so slippery. Now scraping it down and holding on and doing this uh, sort of a pull scrape, trying to get it all out. And there it is. It's about three inches long. And just cut that off and continue down with the getting off this meat. It certainly isn't much of a trick. And if you haven't done any boning before, try, try doing this first before you do an actual boning of a whole chicken, because you'll find it's very easy to do. And once you've done it, you don't think that there's, you, you won't find that it's such a difficult thing to do. And now here in the, in between where the wishbone was, there's always a little bit of meat which you can cut off. There seems to be a tendon in there. I'll just add that. We just want to poke around and take off all of the edible meat that you can. So there are two strips here, and I'll separate them. And now you are left with the carcass bone. Now see, there's a little more meat, which I didn't get off. And the carcass bone, the breast bone, you want also to take off. And one thing, again, you can tell that a chicken is a tender chicken when you bone it, is because if you look at the breast bone, this, the tip end of it wiggles. And that shows that this is a young roasting chicken. If it's bone all the way down and hard, it shows that it is that it's a stewing chicken. And now to take off this, where are my scissors? There. We want to take off half of this carcass, all, all of this top breast bone, and then half of the rib cage. I, you won't be able to see it now, but when, if you're looking closely at it, you'll see that the ribs come in two parts. There's the bottom ribs and the top ribs, and you want to cut right in between the two of them. It makes sort of a V shape. Then you come up to this big bone and you go, ah! And then cut it on the other side. You have to have some strong scissors. Ah! There. And now, cutting up through half of it on this side. Now here again is your, there's your rib cage. And as you can see, it's left a boat shape. And that's what you want, because that's what you're going to put your stuffing in. And I think you can see better now. You can see there the bottom half of the ribs. And here is the top half of the ribs. And you cut right in between them. Now, my colleague Simon Beck and I did this recipe quite a bit the last time we were in France. And we thought we would make everything even better. So we cut all the ribs down to the backbone. Then we found that it was almost impossible to stuff the chicken because there wasn't anything hold it to get holding it together. And as Simka said, very often trying to do something better, you do it worse. So just remember that you just cut it half so that you want to leave this boat shape. And now this is a poulard de demi désossé, or half bone. And it's now going to be reassembled with the stuffing in the center here and then the white meat on top and the skin folded over. 
And you want to always season the cavity first with a little salt. And then if you happen to like cognac, you could put a few drops in. I always think it's rather nice. Putting your thumb over the bottle, you just sprinkle in. Maybe that's a quarter of a teaspoonful, but I think it adds that a je ne sais quoi. And now you have your white meat, and you want to flavor that up, too. There's our little filet mignon. This is to be cut first into strips about half an inch wide. So that gives you a long strip, about, oh, four or five inches long. And there are five strips in that large piece. It's always amazing how much white meat a chicken has. I guess they never have managed to have a chicken that was all dark meat. That would be a good trick. Now this you want to flavor up too with a little bit of salt and also a few drops of cognac if you like it. But if you don't have good cognac, don't use anything at all. It should be the real French stuff. Now this is all ready for the reassembly. And the, for the stuffing, you can use any kind of a stuffing that you would ordinarily use for chicken, like breadcrumbs and herbs, or you could use a sausage meat stuffing. And what I'm going to use is a stuffing that's made out of rice and mushrooms and chicken livers, and then it has an egg in it that holds it all together. And this is uh, a famous stuffing that was invented by Carême, it was called uh, Albufera, after the Duke of Albufera, just because um, Albufera is a place in Spain where rice grows. So if you ever see a stuffing that's called Albufera, you will know that it is a rice stuffing. In the Carême recipe, they have diced foie gras and truffles in it which is very nice, too. It runs the price up a little bit. Now, this is a four and a half pound roaster, and it takes about two cups of stuffing. And it'll serve about six people. You want to mound it up quite well, but you don't want to overstuff it. And then, because we're going to put the white meat back, I want to push the, push the legs back. See, I'm pushing them where the pushing the knees up under the shoulder blades. And then I'm going to secure that with a skewer. It's just going to make it easier to get the white meat on. This is, when we get from this part on, this is sort of everyone invents their own system. This is the one that, that I find that works. Now you see there the legs are held up, and now the white meat goes back on again. Pretty soon, it's going to look like a real chicken. Now, this is to go on in lengthwise strips. So this is, again, somewhat like the original chicken. It will be more so. But the wonderful thing about doing it this way, if you have a good stuffing with a lovely flavor, then the white meat gets all of the flavor. And so even people who don't like white meat, such as my husband, finds that he rather likes this recipe. Now, see, there's all the stuffing on, and then the skin is going to go over. And then that's going all going to be trussed in place. And now for the, for the sewing and trussing back of the skin, you can do several methods. You can do uh, sort of an American method using, using trussing, trussing needles in string, or you can use the French method with, with a needle, a regular needle in string. And this is a French trussing needle. It's just a long steel needle with a large, uh, with a large eye in it. And if you can't get this, it's for some reason awfully difficult to find in this country. 
This I got at the five and ten cent store. It's a plastic knitting needle, and my husband drilled a hole in the end so you can just thread it up. I'll use both of these so you'll see how they work. I just don't know why, when, as you're going to see, this is such a much easier way of pressing that people don't have, why we don't make pressing needles. Now, where are my glasses? Now, you want to use um, a nice white string, and this is a German string ball I got when we were living over there. It's made out of aluminum, and you put your ball of string in, and then it just comes out. You can hang it up on the wall. But it's very nice because the string doesn't fall on the floor. Now, thread the needle. This is just plain white string. And then tie a knot in the end of it. And then we'll start sewing up the skin. And I will start at the back end. And be sure that there's enough flap so that you can catch both sides of the skin as you sew up. And if you overstuff and you can't get the skin together, you'll just have to draw some of the stuffing out. I think I've gone just about, putting just about as much as possible here. Don't have a long string, and then it always catches in everything. Now I want to leave about four inches at the end. Well, I guess if you sew it too carefully, it's awfully hard to get it, get the string off after you've cooked the chicken. So I'm trying to keep it in as straight a line as possible. And I have to add something else there in the middle, but I think it's going to be all right. Main thing is you just want to have the pressing, have the filling stay in. Now we come down to the neck part. And some American chickens don't seem to have very much neck skin, which is an awful nuisance when you come to do anything like this. So if you can, take a look at the chicken and get one that does have enough neck skin. Now I'm going to turn it over and attach the stuffing at the back end here. And then leave, and then leave about three or four inches at the end, because you never know, you may want to attach something. So don't ever cut off anything too, too close. And now we want to turn the wings akimbo, which means just turning that little tip under the shoulder. And now we want to truss the legs. And you could just use skewers and string, but I like to I like to sew the whole thing up. And this time I'll use my plastic knitting needle. So be sure that your legs are pushed well back and then go under the knee. On one side coming out under the knee, on the other, pull the string out. And then we have to turn the chicken over again. No, oh, where am I? There, no, it's come out that side. So go under one of the wings, and then get underneath the a little piece of the backbone, because this is going to hold it. And I'm going to catch that, a bit of that neck skin again, and then go under the other wing on the other side. We've done this several times before, but I keep doing it again in case you might have forgotten how it works. Now, you tie these two ends of string. Tie it in a good knot and then cut it off. 
And now we have the legs to be trussed. It's beginning to look more like a chicken. I think the suture is not as neat as some, as some I've seen. But that's not going to show when it gets all done. Now, go underneath the tail piece, and then under the skin on the top of the end of one of the drumsticks, and then out on the other side. Then you're going to see as we, as I tie this together, that's going to hold in that stuffing. There's a little bit that's fallen out. Put that back in again. There. Now, there seems to be a slight, a slight gap right in there. And this, if this happens, and you'll see I've got these two ends of string. Well, that's an empty end of string. No, I haven't got the other one anymore. But if this happens, you can put just a little trussing pin in there and that will hold it together. This doesn't have to be as neat as, as a regular operation because you're gonna, you'll be covering it with something, even say with parsley, so that if you have any slight gaps, it's not gonna show. So this really now looks like a chicken. I shall clean up my operating table. So you can see that, that that isn't too difficult a thing to do. It's the main thing is just getting down into it and having a sharp knife and remembering uh, just to cut against the bone all the time. And you see that that took heavens about 15 minutes. So here we have our two chickens. As you can see, they look very much alike. This is the plain roaster, and that's our demi désossé. And before, they're all ready to cook, but before you ever cook any kind of a chicken, you want to be sure that you give it a nice massage with fresh, best quality butter, because that's very good for the skin, and it adds a lot more to the taste of the chicken, and it protects it and makes it, you know, it just makes it happy. That's, so always be sure to Always be sure to give it this massage. And now, with your poulard de demi désossé, you can cook it just exactly as you would any ordinary roasting chicken. You can roast it in the oven, or you could use that very nice recipe of uh, casserole poaching. But I think the most delicious way is to poach it in the covered casserole with wine and with herbs. But that's a whole other operation. So we'll just have to do that on another day on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation and by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated. Julia Child is co-author of the book Mastering the Art of French Cooking.